everybody. I want to spend some time today talking about card visuals. And I would say cards are probably my favorite native visual in Power BI. They're just incredibly versatile. They work really well in terms of telling the story of your report. Um, you can go simple with cards. You can create some really intricate cards with KPI type features in them. You can put transparent buttons over them and incorporate them into the navigation experience. Um, but the thing about cards is as simple as they are on the face of it, your results can go sideways in a hurry with cards for reasons we're going to talk about. And so I wanted to spend some time today going through what happens when you start getting incorrect results in your card visuals and how do you fix that. And in the process of that, what I wanted to do was also talk about some best practices for virtual tables, since virtual tables are going to be critical to fixing the problem with our with our card visual results. So let's let's jump in. What I've got here is is a very simple example that I've created just from the uh, external tools practice data set tool that I talked about in a previous video, and I'll put the link in the uh, the YouTube comment section for you if you want to take a look at that. Um, and if we look at the model, it's just a basic star schema sales model. Um, we've got our sales fact table here, our dates table, and that's really what we're going to focus on today is just these two tables. We're not going to worry about the other dimension tables. So keep it simple today um, and kind of keep it focused on the, the problem at hand. So let's take a look. We've got a total sales measure here, which is just the simplest possible measure just the sum of our of our line sales. And if we take that and drop that into our table and then drop that into our card, um, we get the expected results and everything everything works fine. So let's let's expand this out a little bit and see where we start running into some problems. So let's say we want to look at our total sales, but for 2020, in February, we had a major problem and we had a product recall in February. And so all the sales in February got zeroed out. And so we can create a really simple measure here, which is just saying if the date, month, and year is February 2020, we're going to set those sales to zero. Otherwise, it gets the regular total sales value. And if we take that and we drop that measure into a card, ooh, we get 60 million again. And that can't possibly be right looking at the table here where we had 60 million before and now we've got, we've got February sales zeroed out. And so if we take that that total sales with recall and drop that into our table, we'll see it calculates properly here, doesn't calculate the total properly here, and doesn't calculate it properly in the card. And why is that? So when people are starting with DAX, one of the things they assume is that the totals are basically computed by the total of everything above it. And that's not the way DAX works. So in this case, with, with the, the evaluation context of month and year, it's computing line by line. And when it gets down to the total, it's computing based on the context that it finds here, which is no, no month and year. And so what it's doing is if it finds, if we go back to our, to our measure, where it says if the context date, month, and year is February 2020, it gets a zero. Otherwise, it gets total sales. And so it, it's actually doing exactly what we ask it to here, which is it's saying, okay, I didn't find February 2020 here. Give me total sales for that evaluation context. And that is the, the total that we find here. So what we want is we want this measure both here and in the card to be forced to calculate the total from here, taking into account the zero. And for cards, the thing that's challenging about a card is unlike a table, 
a card has no evaluation context. So there's nothing here that's telling it, okay, in February, that should be zero. Everywhere else, it should be the normal value. And so what you've got to do is you've got to build that into, into your analysis and into your measure. And you do that through a virtual table. And if we look at our total sales measure, we don't have a way in this, this measure to build in a virtual table. Um, the sum just calls a, a physical column from a table. And so the question is, how do we, how do we even open the door for that virtual table that provides that context? And the answer is, while sum doesn't open the door for us, sum x does. And so if we look at our total sales measure using sum x instead of sales, what we see is the first argument here calls a table. And in this case calls the sales table. And then it calls the, the column in that table. And so if we were to pop that into our table here, we would see that it, it produces the exact same results as total sales. And in fact, in the way DAX works behind the scenes, when you call sum, it's actually doing that row by row calculation behind the scenes. Um, so we can use this sum X to open the door to that virtual table. And let's go ahead and do that. But typically when I'm working with virtual tables, and I would, I would recommend this as kind of my first best practice for this, this video, is to work in a tool like DAX Studio or Tabular Editor. Um, it makes it a lot easier to visualize what's going on in those virtual tables. And this is, this is going to be a pretty simple one, but when you start getting into complex virtual tables, the ability to visualize what's happening in that table is critical, that otherwise it's, it's like trying to do surgery in the dark. Okay, so if we go up to external tools and then the tabular editor, we can use that to build out our measure and do so in a way that lets us take a look at the virtual table as we do it. So we just jump down here to measures and we're just gonna create a new measure and we're gonna call that a total sales card. Okay, and so now what we want to do is go back and if we, if we think back to what we're trying to do here, we're trying to create a simple virtual table that just has month and year and then the, um, the results of the measure total sales with recall. And so we want to start out with sum x to get that, that sum. And then from that sum x, what we want to do is create and call that virtual table. And when we're creating a virtual table that adds a, a new column to an existing table, um, a best practice, and I can put the, the article in here that explains this in more detail, um, a best practice is to start with add columns. There are other ways to create that, what's called extended column, um, but add columns is viewed as a best practice, both from a performance and an accuracy standpoint. Um, so we, we add columns, and then what we want to do is we're going to use summarize here. And in this case, for a simple table like this, we could also use distinct or values. Um, you could use summarize columns. Um, but I like summarize in the sense that it, it allows us to handle both, both simple and more complex cases. And so I like to just kind of keep my constructs constant if I can. Um, so here what we're going to do is we're just going to go to the dates table and we're going to summarize the month and year. Okay, so we've got that. And then what we want to do is we want to add that, that column for our um, total sales with recall. And the way we do that is we have to name it first. And the naming here is really important because when you're creating virtual columns in a, in a virtual table. Another best practice is to name those starting with an at sign. And I'll, 
I'll put another article explaining this one in detail in the comments as well. But the basic reason I'll show you in a moment is it prevents ambiguity between virtual columns, physical columns, and measures when you call them. So we're going to call this at recall. And we're just going to define this as our total sales with recall measure. OK, and now we've we've completed the virtual table portion of our measure. So we'll close that off. And now for sum x, what we need to do is we're telling it what table to use. Now we need to tell it what expression to, to sum. And so what we're going to do is we're going to tell it to sum that virtual column of recall that we, we just created above. And this is where this is where the naming convention really helps because typically when you're calling a column, you would call table name and then column. But for virtual tables, it just called this column name. And if you didn't put that at sign in there, it would look like a measure. And so this alerts you to the fact that it, it is a, a virtual column that you're calling. So some definitely keep in mind it's a best practice that the experts um, all use in the forum. And so when you see that, that at sign, you'll know what that is. So before we, we go ahead and, um, and test this out, let's make sure our virtual column is working right. So we can take this and copy this over and create a DAX query, which returns a table. And you just start those with evaluate. And then we paste this in. And we hit F5. And that is looking good. So what we see is our virtual table is taking that month and year column and then is calculating the total sales with recall. And it's calculating correctly by zeroing out February. So we're looking good there. So we can now take this and save this back to our model and jump back into Power BI. And we've now got this total sales card, which has our virtual table measure. And now if we take this and drop this into our card visual, what you'll see is we now have the correct number. That what it's doing, and we can we can drop this into, into our table as well. And what you'll see is it's calculating all these correctly as it did before. But now it's calculating the total correctly because what the the sum x is doing is it's saying go down, calculate row by row. And then if you don't have context here in terms of month and year, calculate the sum of everything above it. And so that is giving us the the correct total here and in the card. And so that's that's a, a general way that you can use to fix your your card visual results. So what you want to do, even in the more complex cases, is just recreate the context from your table and then add your measure into that um, in that in that sum x or it could be average x. Um, you want to definitely use an X function because that's what allows you to call the virtual table. But the general process of just creating the context virtually and then adding your measure with that add column summarize construct works for a wide range of, of problems that you'll have in your card visuals. And is also a way you can you can use to fix your your totals in tables or matrices as well. So I hope you found that helpful. Um, and look forward to seeing you in the next video. As always, thanks for watching. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the contents covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators. 
uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best, take care.